Are the Nets the best team in the NBA after sweeping both L.A. teams? Look, my preseason pick was Lakers over Nets in the NBA Finals. Mm. And I'll, I'll stick with that for now. I want to see how things play out over the next several weeks. But I will say this. If I did power rankings, the Nets would be number one, and it wouldn't even be a question. It wouldn't even be close. I'd make them number one with no hesitation. And as I was watching that game last night, the thought that kept going through my mind was, they're the best team in the league. (laughs) And they don't even have their best player. I mean, you can't overstate the impressiveness of a five-game win streak out west going five and oh out west they're 12 and four against teams that are 500 or better that's the best record in the league they have beaten every single elite team in basketball philadelphia boston if you want to include indiana uh the lakers the clippers twice utah denver phoenix and that is with their stars in and out of the lineup Guys, they are probably about 75% of what they will be going forward. They look tremendous. Now, when they came together, there were two questions. How would they fit offensively with chemistry and the defense? Obviously, the offense has been terrific. They're on pace to have the highest rated offense in NBA history with James Harden taking the point, Kyrie willingly taking the two. That's the best situation for him because Harden is a phenomenal point guard and passer, and obviously Kyrie can score. And the great thing, guys, is that we don't have to worry about when KD comes back. With a lot of superstars, you would be like, wow, how's it going to fit? If if they bring so-and-so back in, he's going to take shots away from him, and he's going to you know, have to dribble the ball a lot. Not so with KD. KD can get his 30 points on 16 shots. He will fit in perfectly, not a lot of dribbling, just catching and draining jump shots. So offensively, they're great. And what that's done, guys, the unselfishness of Harden and Kyrie, not only in, you know, playing different roles than they have in the past, but the way they pass the ball, the way they're sharing the basketball, that has got who Shaquille O'Neal calls the others, that has gotten them in the right mindset. So Joe Harris, Tyler Johnson, Bruce Brown, uh, TLC, Jeff Green, the rest of them, they're getting regular touches on the offensive end. They know that if I just move without the ball, if I cut, if I spot up on three, I'm getting an open look. So what are they doing? Hustling on defense. And the defense has been better during this win streak. It's ranked 21st in the league during their five-game win streak. And that's all they need, guys. It doesn't need to be the bad boy Pistons defense. It just needs to be adequate with that firepower on the other end. And it is adequate. They are, they look like the best team in the NBA. Yeah, LeVar, I'm going to disagree with him, but I'll let you go first. I mean, listen, he left a lot of uh, openings there. Well, I I feel like they are the hottest team in the league for certain. Best team, it could be up for debate, but let's go with it because they are the hottest team. They've proven they're the hottest team. And they're playing great basketball. Like Roussard said, you don't even have KD out there with his offensive production. But the cool thing about watching this Brooklyn Nets team is their ability to create space and create opportunity. The others, right, (laughs) moving around. They're getting the opportunities to, to contribute in such a positive manner because you have two guys right now on the court that can create their own shots without needing too much help. So when you look at that aspect of it, It's interesting when you talk about James Harden and a lot of the things that were stated about him was he's selfish. It's interesting that he leads the league, the the NBA, in assists since joining the, the Brooklyn Nets. So this team is balanced, but more importantly, they're so dangerous in terms of two scores right now. They will have three prolific scores. You have possibly three of the most prolific scores uh, in the league, maybe in history together, and you have other guys that are contributing, doing what they need to do. I do believe they have to be better on defense if they're going to make that true run and, and push to win the championship. But right now, 
they're the hottest team in the league. So I'll say they're the best team in the league today. Yes, yes. I agree with both you guys. Uh, definitely. No question. The Nets are the best team in the league right now. But, Chris, you mentioned Kevin Durant has not been playing with the hamstring injury, okay? Things are great when you're beating the Clippers, you're beating the Lakers, and James Harden is really playing the best basketball of his career. Chris, I think you would agree with me. Even better when he was the MVP of the league. Harden's only attempting six free throws a game. He was attempting 11 in Houston, right, when he was the MVP. He's distributing more because he kind of has to. You've got to keep Kyrie Irving happy, and Kyrie's the guy I'm worried about. Let's be honest, guys. When Kevin Durant comes back, Kyrie's not taking 26 shots a game. And if you watch late against the Clippers, what was Kyrie doing, Chris? He was resorting to some hero ball. Two for nine in the fourth quarter, 0 for four on threes. He basically said, I, I want the game-winning shot. I want to do this. And Harden was kind of standing to the side, and that allowed the Clippers to come back in the game. When Kevin Durant is there, I think everybody would agree. Option A, Kevin Durant. Option B, James Harden. Option C, Kyrie Irving. He did not like being option B in Cleveland to LeBron. And I just am curious how when they face some adversity, because there will be some, we all know this, how will Kyrie Irving handle it? I think I, James I, Harden I, defensively. I push back on that okay, a little okay. bit. And, and the reason why I push back on that a little bit is it, de it depends on what the, the defensive sets are going to be coming into those games, right? Some teams have better bigs. They, they can do better in the paint. Some have better perimeter play. I think it depends. It all depends on the matchups that's coming into the games. Because if you have a guy, which, I mean, nobody you're going to say really matches up well with them <laughs> defensively, but you got to say, well, how do they match up against the other team def defensively on their side of the court in terms of Brooklyn paying defense? So you got to look at it from both sides of the court. And if you have a game where there's a smaller guy that may be on, on KD, then maybe it's a KD game. But if you have a guy that it's a favorable matchup for Kyrie, then Kyrie maybe goes from being C option to being A option based upon creating those 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 spaces um, out there on the court. So I would just push back on that yeah. just a little bit, that he isn't always going to be the third option uh, on, in their set. A quick note on the defense, Broussard. Uh, since James Harden has arrived, they are switching on picks more than any team in the league. Their defense was 25th, I think, in efficiency about a week ago, and they have skyrocketed up the charts. I know it's been against, you know, a depleted Lakers team, and Paul George wasn't there the entire game last night. But I will just say, this impressive defensive run from the Nets makes me bullish that they're definitely the team to beat in the East. I had liked the Sixers early in the season. It's pretty clear Seth Curry and Danny Green <laughs> don't have much of a chance against Harden and Kyrie. But, uh, Broussard, do you foresee any issues with Kyrie Irving once Kevin Durant returns? I mean, look, you'd be foolish to sit here and say you know for certain 100% that Kyrie's not going to have any issues. I mean, what was it, a month ago, he went AWOL out of the blue. And he was playing great basketball before that. So you have to leave that open as a possibility, but you can certainly make an argument. I, look, I don't expect that to happen. Let me say that, number one. But if it did, heck, I still could argue with James Harden and Kevin Durant they got a great shot to win the championship. So they bringing Harden in gave them some security just in case something does happen with Kyrie. But I, I'm I'm with LeVar on, you know, you, you want to have this pecking order, J-Mac. And we all know that Durant is the best player. And I agree, Harden is the second best player on that team. Kyrie's third. Kyrie probably doesn't believe that, but that is the case. But I don't think they're going to have a pecking order. Remember, when Kevin Durant's first year in Golden State, he took fewer shots than Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. All right? That, he's taking, he was taking fewer shots than uh, Kyrie before uh, Durant went out with COVID and then the injury or the you know, COVID contact and all that. So I think that they're what they're doing on offense is just hitting the open man. Mm -hmm. That's what they're doing. Like, Harden, all three of those guys can create double teams and space, and they draw attention, and that leaves openings. So that's why Joe Harris has had nights where he's gone for 20-plus points because they are hitting the open man, and I think that open man a lot of times is going to be Kevin Durant or is going to be Kyrie. I will agree with you, J-Mac, on last night's game. At the end, I didn't like Kyrie taking a few of these deep threes early in the shot clock, I might add. You know, so you saw early in the season, Durant missed a couple of 
potential game winners late. And it was almost like Kyrie, a couple games later, Kyrie started taking those shots. He was like, I gave you a chance. You know? <laughs> so I don't want Kyrie thinking that way. He's got to remain self selfless and know that KD can get it done. Harden can get it done. For the most part, he's done that since Harden's been there, but he's got to continue. And defensively with the switching, what that does is that turns the game into a one-on-one game. Because when you switch, it can, can take the offense out of their action. And so now it's just, do, can I take this guy one-on-one? You know, can I take this guy one-on-one? And nobody has better one-on-one players than Brooklyn. So if they can force the other team to play them essentially in a bunch of one-on-one matchups, who's beating them? That's how Houston almost beat Golden State a few years ago was that they switched everything and kind of got Golden State out of its motion and movement and all that, and it became our one-on-one guys against your one-on-one guys. So, uh, look, I'm with you guys. I don't want to overreact and say, oh, they're definitely winning the championship. There's a long way to go. But right now, they look like they could become the king of the league this season. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.